Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. What up, y'all? This town in the building. We having some fire today. Everybody been talking too much all the last couple weeks. Talking about ADOS. Talking about my people, vet. We here now. Tone Talks is in here. Dash Radio, Dash Talk X. We gonna clear some stuff up tonight, right, vet? Right. Talib been talking. I wish I had some professors for parents. Boyce been talking. Tell your boy sell some more crypto. Minister been talking. Your boy Minister been talking. Tell him to stop fighting people. We ain't fought nobody. Wasn't even no ADOS in that in, in that building, I don't think. Come on. Wasn't no ADOS in that in, in that in that fight on our side. Come on. Everybody like been talking. Your boy Black Agenda Report said I'm a district attorney. I'm a criminal defense attorney, everybody. Been one for 10 years. Let's have a discussion today. ADOS facts. I want to clear up some things. Why we created hashtag ADOS. Now, I want y'all to know I'm going to frame this thing a certain way. I'm going to frame this thing around uh, some tweets that have been going around that I've had to answer to, that Vet has had to answer to. Vet, you want to say what up to the audience? What's going on, fam? How's everybody doing? Yeah, we got a little bounce today because I got time today. Use the super chat. Share this. They said we shouldn't take donations, but they selling T-shirts. They got rappers selling T-shirts telling us we shouldn't take donations. We'll clear that up. I don't think I've ever sold a t-shirt until like I sold six samples. Yvette just started a t selling a t-shirt for first time in 10 years this week. But they told us that we shouldn't sell t-shirts or ADOS so people can get the word out. Tell Talib stop talking. So look, we frame this thing around questions. I'm gonna bounce in with the questions then I'm gonna come back around with the first tweet and just get into it and let Yvette go on. You know how she get when she get going. She over there trying to be quiet. Look, number one, what was the purpose of ADOS and who funds it? We funded by y'all, small black donations, tens, fives, twenty fives. We ain't got no no uh no uh right wing funding. I wish everybody would stop saying that we got right wing funding when we don't have no right wing funding. Tens, fives, twenties. I work a job. This is just extra. I do this. It's funny because Yvette actually is, you know, when, when I was doing it, I was writing just articles and I wasn't getting paid to do it. I was just doing it. And Yvette said, you should just monetize your videos. I said, oh, see, I didn't come here for making money, but we going we gonna to deal with that today. Number two, why is it necessary? Why is it necessary to have ADOS? Let's deal with it. Let's deal with the fact that black folks in this country don't have no wealth. Let's deal with the fact that black folks in this country gave everybody birthright citizenship, but don't nobody know it. Come on. Number three, it's only three questions. Who is that? Who has attacked ADOS and why? We gonna dig into some stuff from Angela Rye and Joy Reid to the minister in, in Cobra to Talib Kweli to Boyce Watkins to even some new Africans that have been talking. Everybody been talking, but we gonna clear it up today. Yvette, you wanna start off anything before I get into this first question? Come on, no, let's get, get it. into it, get into it. I'm bouncing right now. Look, when, when I, when, let me tell you my personal thing when I started ADOS. My personal thing when I started ADOS, you know, I really thought about it in the sense of, I went to UCLA and what I saw is, I believe a kind was going on. I believe America has never really understood or figured out how to make the slave whole. And as a result, there was a, a problem because they needed to project that they had black folks. So what I saw happening, and this is my personal view, I ain't projecting this on nobody else, is there was a switcheroo done and Obama is the perfect example of it. Look, my, my mama from Mississippi, my daddy from Alabama. I don't know nothing about no Hawaii or no Kenya. But what I saw was the space that Obama occupied should have been me or someone like me. 
But what America had decided to do was use a lookalike. Now, I ain't got no problem with no lookalike. Just don't play no Stevie Wonder. So what I, what I realized is that people didn't understand the data behind how American descendants of slavery, and at that time we didn't have the term in 2013 and 14, they didn't understand the wealth data. So I went out and I, I interviewed pretty much every major economist from Thomas Shapiro to Darity, and I even tried to, I reached out and got Byron Allen. Understand how hard that was. Don't know billionaire get up and tell y'all it's economic genocide. Talked to Byron for 100 hours about wealth. A lot of y'all talking from talking to boys. Boys can't tell you nothing about no money. Can't nobody with no money tell you about money. So what I wanted to explain to y'all was the condition of black folks. And I feel like we've done that now. That's why ADOS is on fire. So when I got with somebody like Yvette with that political undergirding, you know, this, this sister is powerful. I realized that we had some cooking in the fish pot. So we created this hashtag around 2016, 2017. And we really, it took off when Kamala decided to run as a black woman, even though she's not ADOS. It took off when Cynthia Vero was casted as Harriet Tubman. Shout out to philly.com for covering both of those stories. But look, I'm gonna let Yvette tell, tell us why she did ADOS. Well, the thing that happened, on I think you know that I wrote um, an article, Obama's problem, he's not African-American. Um, and, and that was in 2011, and I kind of got roasted for it. And I didn't have the ADOS context then. Like, like he's, 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 this is, his father's Kenyan, and his, 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 his mother's white American, and I didn't have the context for what he was anchored in, but I knew enough to know that he's not one of us. But just like you, you know, had to use my politics. I didn't have I didn't have the data that you brought to the table in terms of I had some, but I didn't have enough. Like you have to have an entire body of work. And so I knew in 2011 he's not one of us. But the problem that happened too is that AD, ADOS America wasn't ready to hear me because they were believing in him. It took him to come into that office and leave us worse off for us to actually gain traction. That had to happen. I agree. You know, when I look at this thing, I can't help but start off just making sure that the newcomers understand. Black folks ain't got no wealth in this country. We done talked about it. It's just for framing. Black America has 2.6% of the wealth. White folks have 90%. Y'all best friends, though. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but, like, I don't see the purpose if they got all the money. So, like, when we start looking at this thing, what does that mean, Tom? What does that mean? I put out a, a tweet, and I said, you can't be in America under the age of 40 and have big American dreams without wealth transfers anymore. There's an article came out in USA Today, millennials still lean on parents for money. And they're not talking about $100. So while you giving your grandma and your mama $30 for their lottery tickets or $100 for their knees or whatever else you got to give them for their ointments, white folks is getting wealth transfers, huge wealth transfers, especially in the top 20%. I mean, when I say huge, I'm talking about several hundred thousand dollars wealth transfers. And I think for one, a lot of us, we, we just never knew this. And I, I, look at, I look at it and I can't help but tell y'all 5% of black folk, folks, only 5% of black families have more than $350,000 hard. I can't help but tell y'all it's only a few hundred thousand black families above a million dollars. I can't help but tell y'all that if you work in age, which is under the age of 55, you largely probably are wealthless. I mean, uh, unless you hook to a boomer and you see in the world through their purview. Just get honest. Few of y'all out here hooked to a Valerie Jarrett talking to me. Few of y'all out here like Tali with two professors for parents talking to the rest of black folks. And I'm not saying that you can't be black and have two professors for parents. That's what he's going to tweet. What I'm saying to you is that the center black person knows nothing about that experience. Talk to me when you can talk to me, bro, bro. I'm telling you right now that ADOS has a problem with the data. We've lived through fantasies and aberrations because of things like the Cosby Show and Michael Jordan and all of these celebrities. Talib Kweli, if he's a celebrity included, have used it to oppress us. And what I'm saying to you right now is ADOS ain't having it no more. Stop calling us xenophobic because we not. We defended an African man that was hit by a minister. That was an African man. And I would defend him again, regardless of whether he's being African. He was asking the right questions. So shouldn't a minister have to deal with xenophobia? 
if he hit an African, what you think, Yvette? I'm going to get over to Minister, but I just... Well, I, well, well, I, think, I think so. I think, I think that... But that's the problem. That is the problem. Everybody's looking at everything through the wrong lens. So he doesn't get charged with that. So he doesn't get charged with any of that. Like, nobody looks at him through that lens. Look at the way he looked. If you go back and look at that video, look at the way he looked at that man throughout the whole thing. He was very hostile. I will charge anyone. I will dare anyone to say that you came up to me, whether it was at the gas station or the airport at an event, and I reacted that way to you. That is snobbery. That is elitism. That is some boule garbage. You think you're better than the person that you're talking to because you're on MSNBC, because you got a serious program? You can't treat people like trash. Last you I checked, last I checked, 500 people had watched this show. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We got 1,000 in the box. By the time this video finishes, it'll probably be at 40,000. This is no no promotion. We doing this thing organic. I don't know what everybody, I don't know how a person with two professors for parents can call somebody who came from a single mama in the ghetto uh, a right winger. Come on, man. You can't say nothing to me, Talib Kweli. I'm saying to you, I feel like it, it, it's problematic that all of this has happened and that black America has given it any kind of reverence. Now, shout out to the ADOS people that have been in the chat dealing with these people. But I'm telling you right now, you're dealing with two people that have voted Democratic their whole life and have spent the last few years donating nothing but their time to creating a movement. And we're here now. Reparations is being talked about in a way we have not seen in 100 years. Because of ADOS and the work of myself, Yvette, Tariq, uh, Kevin Cosby, Dr. Kevin Cosby, Sandy Darity. And you, and you the listeners. And what they're trying to say is that we are, 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 are right-wing funded. Look, I know Yvette very, very personally. I'm going to tell you all right now. I talk to Yvette every day for about an hour and a half. The woman has taken no money from the right wing. She's taken no money from this PFER thing. But at the same time, can we ask the question of Encobra with, with George Soros and uh, Open Borders? Can we ask it? I asked uh, Julian Malvo a question. She never answered. She said we need discourse. She didn't answer the question I asked her. And that question regard was in regards to, to stop smearing ADOS and explain how you're blaming us for something that we weren't involved with. We weren't involved with the uh, altercation with Mark Thompson. It was an African, a pan-African. It's named Africa. Come on. Our group is ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery. Now, we have allies, but he, but he wasn't there as an ADOS representative. He was a Pan-Africanist. I'm saying to you, let's get right into it. When I start looking at this thing, I got to tell y'all straight, I am unapologetically black. Now they're asking me to apologize for creating ADOS and telling black folks, my black folks, the truth of the economic meaning of their blackness. And I ain't going to apologize. And I will not yield. I'm saying to you that they don't want this to happen. And I'm not saying that Encobra don't want it to happen, but I don't know how, how somebody could be on the board of open borders and believe in reparations. Reparations makes you a, 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 a plus level citizen through the wealth. Don't go together. Yvette, you want to speak to that? Well, yeah, I think, I think what, see, I don't think what people understand in terms of this progressive, progressive for immigration reform in terms of people and how they're coming at me, oh, you're a right wing or the right wing, the right wing. No, but I, ADOS deserves to have a space in the immigration reform room. You can't tell us you are bashing me and basically saying you're trying to censor me and saying you are not allowed to walk in that door and have that conversation. You're not allowed to do that. You have to go in this door over here and, and be an open borders person, and you have to let everyone have access to what your people have fought years for, even if it hurts you. I said a long time ago in terms of my personal, my personal view about immigration is that it is a redistribution of wealth from the people who can hire and use uh, 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 e illegal immigrants to the people who are going to have to compete with them. And ADOS people have to compete with them. So we have a very specifically different viewpoint and vantage point in terms of our in terms of how we feel about immigration. Now, we can have a we can all have a come to Jesus meeting and decide what that means for all of us. And we can debate that. But you can't tell me what I have a right to say and what I have a right to think. The real problem is that these people want us to be mules. We're supposed to Come either on. be sell out to the Republican Party or we're supposed to be mules for the Democratic Party. The problem happens when you come in and you say, I'm not going to do either of those things. I'm going to stand up for my group, my ADOS group, and I don't care how you feel about it. 
everybody get everybody gets pissed off when you say that because they understand the power and the history of ADOS and they understand that if we ever wake up and do what we're doing right now, that we become a problem for this country because this country doesn't want to give us our due. They understand that and we have a right to decide what our politics looks like. Breaking we Brown have to do that. Breaking Brown and Tone Talks is smelling salt for black America. We awake now is the event. Ain't no if we awake. And now people looking around and understand what it means to have the middle black family worth seventeen hundred dollars without depreciating assets. We look over. We can't help but look at this uh, article that came out in the Wall Street Journal. HBCU alumni have a median federal debt load of about twenty nine thousand dollars. To give you some context, for profit colleges have a median debt load of about thirty five thousand dollars. It, it basically says that college ain't for black folks no more because to walk out of there, you got to walk out of there with so much debt. That the college didn't make no sense because they're not paying you a salary that's commensurate, that, that, that equals it. We got to talk. You know, I, I, I want black folks to have a lot, but the only gap, I, only way I see is reparations. Reparations is the close of the racial wealth gap. The difference, though, is that reparations don't close the racial wealth gap for anybody but ADOS. So you got to ask yourself, how many people that aren't ADOS don't want you to get reparations? I'm just saying. Forget all this right-wing stuff. I, I don't know how I was supposed to come from South Central and be right wing. Understand this, even with the district attorney thing, you talking to somebody who, when I graduated from law school, my, when I graduated from UCLA, my mama was 36, I think, 36 or something like that. Come on. You, when I graduated from law, from law school, I just was trying to figure out what this field was. I had no guidance. I did that for one year. Stop trying to make me into a career prosecutor or something. Kamala Harris is a career prosecutor. That is somebody who set policy. I did 10 years as a criminal defense attorney. Come on, man. I'm saying to you, what I see is that a lot of people talking, but they don't got no answers. What they want to do is they want to say they created American descendants of slavery or ADOS so that they can go on TV, on CNN, and talk about reparations. I'm talking about boys. I ain't holding no punches today. We got to understand as a black group before we get to boys, why boys work. Black America built itself out of pieces, literally, of a Cosby-esque fantasy. Now it needs that fantasy to be real in a world built of white inheritances and wealth transfers. See, y'all need a million dollars for what you wanted out of life. That's because you want to be in the top 15% of America. What you want, the things you want, one, two, three, four, five, high-end college, paid off school, um, uh, um, a house worth $600,000 of retirement, life insurance. This is a million dollar life. But understand that's the top 10% of America. But we descend from slaves and never dealt with politics or never got reparations. How are you gonna be in the top 10%? Well, you don't wanna do no immigration uh, po politics. You, Your world is in the bottom 30%, bottom 40%. This is craziness. That's why Boyce worked. That's why he can sell you a million dollar class because you want to be a millionaire. The thing you don't understand is don't nobody learn how to be a millionaire from a million dollar class. Come on. Tell me your talk, thoughts on Boyce. Go ahead, Yvette. No, what I, what I, I lost part of my thought. But what I was going to say, um, part of what I was going to say was um, what happened, Boyce, if you look back through Boyce's life and Boyce's, um, his, his ventures, and I think this is something that Vicki Dillard should understand because she has a past and she should wonder why Boyce doesn't have a lot of those people that he used to work with anymore, why he hasn't kept, him, why he hasn't kept any of them around except his brother. She should really question that and if she's being used. Because what happens, Boyce has, a, Boyce has a pattern. And if you look back at it, you'll recognize the pattern. He just jumps on whatever kind of, whatever's hot right now. And he exploits it for however long it's hot. And then he leaves it alone. And so he exploits it for however long he can. Remember the, I remember the, the thing that happened with the judge. I remember cryptocurrency. If you look back through everything Boyce has been involved with, he hasn't stayed with it long. He has no staying power. He gets in there, he overtakes it, becomes a voice of whatever he's talking about, exploits it to get, to, whether it's to get media time or whether it's to sell something like the cryptocurrency product or whatever that, whatever that is or the boot camp product. And then once he's gotten everything out of it that he can, he leaves it alone. And I, I challenge everyone to go and just look at that pattern. He has a pattern. If you go back and look through his videos, all through all the videos he has, he's always on something. Or and if he's not on something, he's just gossiping. He's talking about celebrities. He's a he's a little chatty Cassie. 
you can't have that kind of scattered, unfocused person at the head of any kind of movement. Because he, look, look at what he look at what he did with look at what he did with this. What he did was this: was he came in, he said, "Oh, oh, what is this? You all, are, you all, are, you all are naysayers. You all are, you all are begging. You'll never have reparations." That's what he said. Number She's one, talking about reparations. Then when, realized, then when he realized it had caught. Then when he realized that it caught, he said there is no racial wealth wealth gap. And that's what she, that's what reparations is for, to close the racial wealth gap. But once he realized that it caught, he said, well, Yvette, come on, let's make nice. I knew this was a scam. I knew I didn't want to take the bait on that hook because I know boys, better than, better than most of y'all know boys, who say Yvette go talk to boys. So I knew what he was up to. So then when I didn't let him back in, he said, oh, I'm the better leader. I'm going to take over. I'm going to position myself as the grown-up in the room that's bringing everybody together. So I will be the wise elder. But I know you too well, boy. I know what this is, and I know what this looks like. You're just going to use it up and rinse, repeat, and find the next thing to hop on to. Don't nobody – I mean, if you were really into crypto, you'd still be talking about crypto. You'd still be talking about Bitcoin. You'd still be trying to lead people. How many of your people were following your advice and you just stopped talking about it? Is that who y'all want to follow? I'm just saying to y'all, look look here. All I, all I can do is just know that there's a, there's a black woman out there suing boys for millions. I don't know how that's going to come out. A lot of allegations. Go check the paperwork out. For me, that's a question mark that he got to answer as a man. And I feel like when I look at it, they the fight is over the Black Wealth Boot Camp. So you got a lawsuit about the Black Wealth Boot Camp. Now you want to get involved with a reparations discussion with high-level economists. It ain't going to happen. I, 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 just, I just, you know, he's ADOS. But he's not gonna be talking about like what we all need because he that that ain't gonna work. And so like I just come back to it and I ask the next question, which is why is it necessary? Why is it necessary to establish ADOS, American descendants of slavery? Well, we haven't had a group, that's why we ain't got nowhere. Blackness is not a group. Imagine a world where white people ran around talking about I'm European American with a kilt on, eating a a, a, a croissant, a French croissant. Drinking English tea. That's what uh, African American, Pan Africanists have been doing, mixing a bunch of, of cultures all across Africa to make them feel good. But in doing that, they have undermined the very, the very legality, the, the formation of a group identity around descendancy of slavery that allows you to make claims. Why do you think this is set in? Because they should. When I say set in, why do you think all the Democrats are talking about it? Because ADOS exists. Because we're not talking about it from a global aspect. We're coming from a very real aspect. The reason it's S at the end, slavery, is it's for the institution of slavery. It isn't about calling you a slave. That's what the institution was. It was the institution of slavery. So we're trying to make a legal claim against that institution. Oh, y'all didn't know that. Just let me be a lawyer. Let Sandy Derry be an economist. Let Yvette be a, po a, a political analyst. And you just be what you are. And I don't know what some of y'all are. And I'm not talking about the ADOS people right now. I'm talking about roundabout people that come in and say, well, I, I think you'd rather be enslaved. Enslaved is better. It makes me feel better. Come on, dude. We, we out here doing work. Move out the way. Understand that this was dead in the water. Nobody was talking about it. I don't want to hear no more about how in Cobra had been doing 30 years of work. Nobody was talking about this. Go do the Google search. We coming for a black agenda, we coming for identity, and we coming for reparations. That's the focus of ADOS. We're forming this, 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 this group identity, we're moving along, and people getting in the way. Well, if you get in the way, you're gonna get run over. I'm not talking about physically, but in terms of you actually stopping ADOS, ain't gonna happen. What you think, Yvette? I, I, th I think you're exactly right. You're not going to get in the way of what we're doing. Like, this is, like, once the idea is out and once people are woke, there's nothing you can do. Like, it, you think that you can just kill it by attacking the torn event. No, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do now. And let me just talk to this. Let me just speak to this. Because one of the people that they have sent out to, to attack us, and especially me, is Talib Kweli. Now, I want everybody, if you, if, if you haven't been following this, understand that Antonio and I both tweeted him. Understand that this guy, has honed in on me sharing pictures and images and you look goofy as, as blah, blah, blah. I don't know how anybody who looks like Talib Kweli can say anything about me, but whatever. I don't get into those little spats or fights or whatever can, whatever may be. But understand that he doesn't pick on other men because he's a bully. 
That's why he's just picking on the woman. All his pictures, he's circulating and recirculating the same pics and images. And that's why I believe that Charlie Peach article, which called him like the black slave catchers, is true. That's who you are. And he's not even a smart person. This is a guy who said, oh, my God, Yvette supported Bernie in 2016, which is true. It was a different election cycle. Then he comes back around and say, well, Yvette is a right winger. Make up your mind. You can't even figure out who you think I am or what you, you can't even get your accusations right. And then you come back around, and I noticed, as, as, as was, was quoted in something today in an article on my Twitter, that he misquoted his own song, and he misquoted his own song when he wrote about it immediately. So I think you got somebody to write that article. You can't even write. So what are you doing coming at me? You spent over a month coming at me, voices you, his channel for you both to come on and pile on and attack me, but then you accuse me of attacking other people. I left Talib Kweli alone. I blocked him. I moved on. I didn't have time. And he's still going because, listen, listen, there is no, he wants to get in. I don't think we understand, Antonio, that these people are clout chasing us. They want to be politically relevant. It is no, it is no, nobody should be surprised that Yvette Nicole Brown, that actress, got on Joy Reid's show after attacking me. Like, these people have found, like, a way to have, a, like, a political finesse within Hollywood to where they can and ingratiate themselves within people. You have Talib Kweli saying, oh, Yvette, they, they selling T-shirts. Negro, you and every other rapper sell T-shirts. So y'all can sell T-shirts with your, and you still singing the same song. Ain't nobody really liked you since, you know, you and most deaf, and you ain't really did nothing worth nothing. So you're going to get on stage with a mostly white audience and guess to get by, ah, 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 ah. And you can sell a T-shirt for that, but I can't sell a T-shirt. If you don't get your little hobbit pro self out of here and just stop, stop with this stupidity. This man is a narcissist. I made, I made, effect. I made seven shirts and, and one hoodie for sample. That's it. Yvette just started selling shirts two days ago. See, this is the craziness. Even like with the donation thing, look, this content has to be created. The support for this content comes from black donors. I don't understand how people believe that. Look, Talib Kweli says stuff and, and then goes on stage and then y'all pay to go see him if you if you decide to pay. I don't see how somebody that does that can say anything about us providing the level of content that we've provided. We've awakened the nation. He should give us some money, straight up. He can get, he can go to tontos.org and give me some money. Because, I, I mean, I think that in a lot of ways we've helped him. And I, I just look at this thing and I look overall at, at what's happening and we believe that celebrities should have one lane but black politics should not have a lane. And that's because of, a, of, of 20 years of just like nothingness. I believe his music should be free. Like that's my belief. Just give away your music because it's not that good. It's okay. But like just give it away and let everybody listen. That's what I was doing with my articles and I was more educated than you. Like I, I, I come to this thing and I start talking about it. And, and, you know, they went out and they got the, the daily cost to write an article. And the article ain't got no research in it. You know, it says that we attacked Obama. No, we, we talked to the data of what Obama did. Obama underperformed, failed, really, black America. You look at SBA loans. That's what we have in the agenda. You look at it, and the SBA loans under Bush was 9%. Under Obama, it was 1.9%. That's the first black president. We not supposed to talk about that? Understand Obama spoke to Reagan more than any president in a long while. Nobody accused Obama of being a right winger. Understand that, that Cory Booker, to get a, uh, something moving, did a deal with, I believe, Rand Paul to talk about criminal justice reform. Nobody called him a right winger, rightfully so. But I don't understand how a, a woman in Yvette can be called a right winger for just thinking about talking about immigration. Somebody gonna say, well, joining the Peaver board and I think it is thinking about it. She ain't gonna accept the dollar. Let's talk about that hat, Yvette, the, the, the Make America Great the Again hat. hat. What was hat? hat? Look, it was, a, look, I remember the show because I was talking to Yvette before the show. The show was about how we need to approach politics as Trump started uh, going in. We need to be more alert, more aware, more connected to what we gonna do going forward. It was not a, a support of Trump. Yvette did not walk around the city with that hat on. Yvette didn't keep that hat on for the show. Shut up. <laughs> the only time I ever wore the hat was during the show. And you know what? And you didn't wear it the whole show. It was like during no, the first. like three minutes. Yeah. The, 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 the funniest thing about that hat, though, is that, like, for the longest time, I left the video up. 
I just took it down like two weeks ago because I always thought that when people went to watch the video, they would see, oh, she's not supportive of Trump. What happened, though, was the opposite. Instead of going to watch the video, people just went and took a lot of different screenshots from different angles. Nobody watched the, the hour and 47 minutes of the video to see that, like, she's talking about what you do in terms of politics. She's using that Trump hat to show, like, if he were to ever do anything, then you would, you would, you would approach politics and any politician by taking them on and taking them off. You don't support a politician. You, you support a politician, not in general, but when they do something for you. That's what the prop hat was, and it was just fun. We laughed about it. We joked about it. I took it off, threw it away. That's just how it went. Let's go. Let, let, a- let, let's look at this thing, too. Talib started talking when we, when we went after Kamala, but we can't help but understand that Talib's brother works either for or with Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. How can you work for your brother work for Kamala Harris, and you put out a tweet where you said protect Kamala Harris at all costs, and not everybody not understand you just don't deserve no air in this discussion. I'm not dealing with the fact that your your uh, your parents are professors. I'm not dealing with the fact that you're either half or a quarter Caribbean, which you are, and I ain't got no issue. But this is a discussion that requires you to be full throated about the understanding of what ADOS have been shut out. My mama had me at 16. Your mama was a professor. Stop talking, bro. Stop talking. You got a lot of people that's going to get inheritance telling black, black people they ain't going to have nothing of when their parents die, something about reparations. When my mama passed away, God bless her soul, I found a wallet with, with, uh, with uh, prepaid cards in it, little, little, little uh, uh, Nick's check cashing cards. I need to know from Ty Lear, tweet it. Tell me what your mama going to leave you. Because if your mama leaving you a couple hundred thousand, I see why you ain't for reparations. You got yours. You got a loophole. Stop telling me I'm right wing when you the one that got everything all set up, bro, bro. I seen your pops. I'm just saying to you, I don't have no personal problem with the man. But he done went after Yvette. He done went after ADOS. But he ain't talking about how his life is built on this loophole. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it today. So, look, Joy Reid, Angela Rye, they called us Russian bots. It ain't work. Intercept did an article and explained that we not bots. One brother, Amos, he went out there and held up signs. You have black people across the country doing little videos that I'm not a Russian bot. No black media. This is all relationships that I had developed. Understand why the Intercept article got written. I had developed that relationship from the Huffington Post. We don't have black media. Understand that, 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 that shout out to your web because he puts out stuff all the time. I know he does a lot of celebrity stuff, but that's a man, that's a brother over there, Lee, who reports the news as it is. And I'm saying to you right now, what we have is a problem because, you know, MSNBC, CNN has these people on there talking that don't know nothing about what black people are going through. Joy Reid ain't ADOS, y'all. She ain't, I don't think she really wants this to happen. It's happening though. I'm saying to y'all today that we, we got time today. I want to also make it clear. This is, this is a shout out to everybody out there that's an ally. We not xenophobic, not at all. The problem that happens is that reparations are naturally divisive because it creates a division around those people that descended from American slavery. We know, according to the Smithsonian, there was literally nearly no voluntary black immigrants before the early 60s in America. Few of them were students, very few were students or something like that. We see the big boom in 1980. Of course, it's easy to come here after 1980 as a nurse or, or a doctor or something like that, or even somebody who has a doctor degree but can't practice yet in America into an enclave community. I was talking to Pastor Kevin Cosby. He said he don't have an African in his, in his, his service. That's because they set their own churches up in, the, in these communities. No, fold in. Be part of our institutions. If you're going to take some of our wealth and our, our resource in terms of programs and everything else, we either are one or we not one. What you think, Vet? Well, I think that's true, and I think people need to stop trying to put a wool over our eyes. Because what Talib Kweli will say was, oh, my brother doesn't work for Kamala Harris. Listen, stop. let's not play games with each other. He's a, he's a professor at Columbia. Everybody be wanting to work for the White House. If this, if this, if this first, she's going she's gonna, to she's gonna coin herself the first black, female president you want to work for her 
You want to work in that White House as her policy advisor. You want to be in there. So I don't care what your brother does. I know he wants to be in. I know he's ambitious, or he wouldn't have been sitting behind Kamala at that hearing with Brett Kavanaugh. Y'all all ambitious, and you're trying to get your brother in because that's how you stay in. So you can go do speaking fees and do all kind of stuff because of what your brother did and try to link that to hip hop. You got your own little avenue that you're working, and you're trying to use us as the entryway and the doorway into that. I'm not fooled. Let's talk about Mark Thompson. Look, this series thing then went. I don't know what these people are talking about. Honestly, Yvette called me in the morning and said that it looked like somebody, Mark Thompson got an altercation with somebody from ADOS because he put out a tweet real early in the morning. The video come out, and it was an African man named Africa um, from Nigeria, supposedly. He said he's not from uh, not ADOS. But still, Mark Thompson runs around and gets all this support that ADOS attacked him. He doesn't tell everybody, he doesn't tell everybody the words he's been saying. Let me use one tweet. He said, WAPO is not a friend of black people, especially black uh, Poles. Uninformed Princess Six, what kind of real black person uses the white press hit job against another black person? You RWB waving Miss Butterworth. That's what he called a uh, woman. You RWB Miss Butterworth. This man has been running around saying that to a lot of different people, and that's what's incited them towards him. Now, that day, from my view, he hit another man. He grabbed his face, pushed into his chest, and also hit him. Then acted like a victim, and then blamed ADOS when we weren't involved. Sirius is on him over that video. You got to deal with that video. I don't know what's going on with you and Julianne Malvo because Julianne Malvo comes out and says, can't we have discourse? I challenge her. She don't, in, in a real po pr productive way, to explain that she's seen the video. Come to find out, I look at the picture, she in the corner of the picture, so she was there at the event. So what are you talking about? How do you talk to somebody who has the history that Mark Thompson has? See, I ain't, we ain't even brought up Mark Thompson's history. We doing it today. I got time today. In the late 80s, I believe, early 90s, this man has a history of abuse. It, it, I, I'll pull up the article in the final version. This is not the first time. I'm not saying to you, brother, that you don't have a way to reconcile that or grow, but it don't seem like you grew. It seems like you're getting in the way of reparations. Step to the side. Stop trying to do your new hairdo and wear your new outfits and let ADOS make this happen for black folks. You're getting in the way. What you think, vet? Before I take the first call. I think not only not only are you getting in the way, you run into white billionaires to help you get in the way. You all ran to media maps. You had you had you had Thompson and all of them, and probably Kwali could have been involved. We don't know, but y'all ran to media matters to have this Soros Soros. Joy Soros is a billionaire, so you ran to a white billionaire to destroy a, a, a group that's working on a black agenda and a specific justice claim for ADOS to get us specific policies for our group. You ran to a white billionaire to kill an uh, uh, ADOS organization uh, that's, that's trying to do real work for descendants of, 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 of chattel slaves in this country. Do you understand what kind of a sellout you have to be to do that? Well, he said, he understand. He said it in his tweet. He said, who runs to white media? But then he shared all the white media. Let's take the first caller. You got to turn your background down. Hey, what's up? What's up, Tom? What's going on, man? This this Travis Johnson, Black Dollars University, man, representing all the ADOS across the diaspora, man. What's up to Yvette Carnell? What's going on, y'all? What's up? Phone lines lit. lit. You, got, you got 30 seconds. Give it to me. Hey, well, I just wanted to say, man, that I put out something today about you guys and Tali Kwali, and I just want y'all to go and tune into it on Black Dollars University, man. We out here trying to push this narrative, man, and we all doing work, man. Underground, everybody, we out here doing work, man. We got your back, the ADOS 300 in the building, and we ain't going to stop, man. I can't wait to see y'all in Louisville, Kentucky, and this going to be on, man. ADOS in the building. I see y'all, baby. Thank you so much, man. Shout out from L.A. Shout out from L.A. Look, we just taking hot callers. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Las Vegas, Nevada. What up? What up, Vegas? Give me your take. Peace. Peace, home. Peace, Yvette. Uh, I just got one question for either one of y'all. Go ahead. Uh, why, why are these people trying to stand in the way? Why? What What does it serve them? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like with Talib, 
why would he speak down on a movement that's going to better the people? Let me say I this. Let me say this. You never know what people's agenda is. I think when first thing you always got to look at personal things. You know, I'm not saying that Talib Kweli is homophobic, but I just think that we got to analyze it from that possibility as well. Um, Cause I, I think there was personal attacks done towards Yvette that were more than unfair. Um, we don't know about that, but and they we, were real slick. They were real slick. They were like trying to say something, but not really saying something. So go on. I also got to say, you got to understand that there's a lot of people who are being paid by people that are behind open borders and immigration that is not in the interest of black folks. But for, for, for decades, black folks have been a dead political group. Even Black Lives Matter mostly talked to like intersectionalism and uh, black vi- violence on like black men. But as far as like a real black agenda, I'm not, I know they had an agenda, but you got to be laser focused on this. Either you laser focused or you not. It's not going to work if you got a bunch of stuff and then you just talk about black people too. This got to be a, a this got to be a, a you know five million black people pushing saying reparations is why I'm voting or I'm not voting. Period. And I'm not saying for black people not to vote. Don't run down and say that Tone said that. What I'm saying to you today is that they gonna have to come with with, with a real agenda. We are gonna have to adjust HR 40. We are gonna have to adjust the the Senate companion bill. First time in a hundred years they had a bill to, to to be a companion. First time in decades that the companion bill, the energy. This is all ADOS. I want y'all to stand up and take a clap for yourself. So I just think there's a lot of people with agendas, personal agendas personal ways that they might get paid, personal people behind them that they might not even know, and they putting pressure because they ain't never seen nothing like this. And it's scary. It's okay. It's scary. I understand. But me and Vet ain't scared. Go, go ahead. So, last thing. One last question. How, 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 how does, like, a person like Boyce Watkins get these, uh, I guess, these seats are on these news uh, broadcasts and you guys don't? He ain't had no seat in a long time, but go ahead, Vic. No, I don't think he's had a seat in a long time, and I think that's why he's making so much noise. I don't think people, you know, I, I haven't seen Boyce's bank account. I don't know how much he made, but I can tell you, I bet you the drive for ADOS and the data that Antonio and I have put out has dried up some of this Blackwell boot camp stuff. I think that's why you don't hear him talking about it as much. If you remember a few years ago, five, six years ago, even six, seven years ago, Boyce was always, he was on Fox News. It's funny that he, He's the one who talks about, oh, is that the right winger? You used to show up to Fox and talk to Fox all the time. You love Fox, boy. Let me let me tell Fox all the time. Let me say one more thing to you, bro. Like all y'all, all y'all gotta understand the way this thing worked. I talked to CNN about coming on there, but they was like talking about like bashing this or that. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. So you come in with heat or you don't come at all. You gotta understand that Joy Reid's show on the weekends on Saturdays during the day. That's like off time. It sees a hundred and seventy five thousand viewers between the ages of 25 and 56. How many of those are black? Maybe five, 10,000? I got 2,100 in the box. I got 2,100 in the box talking politics right now. Do you, like, and this is just the beginning. I don't need their show. They need me. Caller, thank you so much for calling in. Let's take another caller. Beck, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, can you hear me, Tony? This is, this is Sean in Dallas. What up, man? Dallas, we down in Texas now, Yvette. Yeah. <laughs> How you guys doing? All right, all right. We want to hear your your voice on this. Well, I know I just want to guys uh, thank you for all you're doing, and just to give you guys some good news. Uh, if you've been kept, uh, keeping up with HR forty, just yesterday, uh, a few people signed on uh, of the CBC. Andre Carson. Uh, it's like five different people that signed on. Um, I don't remember the names. Uh, Elijah Cummings. So hey, guys, stay out there. No, Stay don't focused. don't run off. Don't, don't run off. Let me stuff. say let me say something, brother, because you gon you gon yeah. you gon you gon get the congratulations that the rest of ADOS is gonna live through you getting. I want to say a shout out to you, brother, for following that, for pushing for that, and and along with a million other ADOS people that are out there, because you got to understand that this bill has been introduced for decades, and these people haven't been signing on. It's not by accident that ADOS came about, and then they decided to sign on. The pressure that we're creating has not been seen in black politics for decades since the civil rights movement, really. I'm saying to you, brother, this is you too. So congratulations to you as well. Shout out to ADOS. Thank you. All right. All right, fam. That's all I want. Say peace and love, everybody. Keep doing good work and stay focused. Y'all have a good evening. All right, man. We taking hot callers. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Hello? Hey, what's good, Tone? This is uh, Johnny, man. I'm calling from Los Angeles. From what up, Ohio. Johnny? What up, Johnny? Uh, look, I'm going to bring something up that's the, a little twist. Recently, a guy named Prince Aruzu went on uh, Marianne Williams' show, a, a CNN town hall. Marianne Williamson was on CNN on her town hall. Comes out that he's an African prince and possibly his family owns slaves. And he asked the question of Marianne Williamson, the same Marianne Williamson that I had interviewed in this chair maybe about two months ago, that should, you know, what does she think about Africans and African Americans getting uh, reparations? He comes on my Twitter, blocks Yvette, comes on my Twitter, and this gang, saying that we should be thankful that he introduced us to Marianne Williamson. Again, she sat in this chair. I ain't going to say nothing. Interviewed her already. Then he also takes a position that he he made it. He, it was an accident on his part. It was a slip of the tongue. But we go on his Twitter. Come on, because we got ADOS out here. Y'all better block your Twitters if you got a lot of weird, weird stuff on there. Mine's is open. I ain't got none. Um, and you see that he has these messages where he called us a kata. Wild animals. Understand that I don't care what anybody says. My mama, I'm going to speak to my mama, has never given me a term or treated anyone that was African any kind of derogatory way or called them anything similar to Akata. In fact, we took an African when I was in high school to our church with us, and I don't even think she knew he was African because we don't have delineation that way. But they keep trying to make it seem like it's okay that their parents do that because we called them booty scratch, some weird booty scratchers, some kid stuff. We don't have a cultural delineation. That's why we praise you. See, the problem that ADOS presents is it flips that on his head. Caller, what you think about that whole thing? Yeah, I just think that um, when you, like, even just, um, I always start with, like, this first premise and this initial, like, thought process, like, to even think, like, for them to even come to our shores, actually, and, like, like even though I'm a light-skinned brother, like, come look like us and, like, actually think that they can come here and make it after knowing, like, and they actually know what happens to us here, what go, what we go through, that we're the most incarcerated people, that we're like, like there's just all the fucking litany of things that we go through that all these politicians for some reason can't specifically address, but they can specifically announce. Like, you know, that type of shit. For them to even come here means that their white supremacy sympathizes, I think. So I think that even like if we start with that premise, that initial premise for anyone, we have real immigrants who come here and who come here for genuine reasons, for reasons that are just for horrible reasons that we can't even understand or even fathom, even in our fucked up position. Come on. Excuse me. But at the same time, they have to understand that this society was built based upon our perception, based upon our reality, based upon what people, what's going on in our history. And if they actually understood our history, they would be like, God damn, why the fuck would I ever want to step foot on those shores? Why don't I want to fucking bring these people home? Why don't I want to fucking let me break? Let me break. Let me break in here. Let me break in here, caller, because I'm gonna I'm flip over to Yvette. Look, Yvette. One thing that I continuously tell people is, no matter if you cut hair in L.A. and you go to Philadelphia right now, you're just gonna be the L.A. dude and they got a chair in the haircut place. We don't have tribes. We had every every time to create one, but we don't have tribes. And I don't think we understand a world where other people do have tribes that that war with each other. We have gangs and sense of uh, like small gangs in cities, but full on tribes. No, we don't have that. Come on. No. So I come to you, Yvette, and I say to you, I got a tweet here where, where Africans actually challenged when people said we don't use the word Akata. Again, Lovey Ajaye, who is Nigerian, actually stated that Akata means wild animal. This is coming from somebody who actually is Nigerian. And what they said back to people in the threads that, that said this is one lady said, uh, are y'all really on my timeline trying to tell these folks Akata is a harmless word? And they were. Uh, another one said, my mom's worst nightmare is me getting married to an Akata. My mom's worst nightmare is me getting married to an Akata. This Prince Aruzu guy says in his tweet, if you're an African girl dating an Akata or a Yinbo, which is a white person, a wild animal or a white person, you're single. So we're basically invisible. This is the man who stood up and asked a question at the CNN town hall as though he represented us 
after his family elect, possibly sold slaves. Yvette, what's your take on it? Well, that's because that's, that's a failure of black politics. That's a failure of us not making distinctions. You know, when you talk about tribes in Africa, one of the reasons that we didn't have tribes is because we've always been in the belly of the beast. Like, we're in, we've been the minority in this country, and we've had to fight white supremacy on the level of being a minority, not a majority, com- not a majority in a country like in, a, in, a, in, a, in one of these African countries where you, you were the majority, but you got colonized. We had a very different situation, so we just coalesced with each other and we fought. That's a different thing with them. They had all sorts of tribes and everything like that. And so we don't understand that when we interact, we're interacting with people who understand division and divisiveness already between black people and African people. They get that. We don't get it. But they operate from a, prime, from a, from a framework of tribes and tribalism. And they're bringing that kind of tribalism here. And what you saw with that dude is he was speaking with a forked tongue. He said, we're not each other's enemies. I'm Pan-Africanist. And then the other thing, and, and then later, and then earlier, he was saying that we were a Carter. See, that's what you do. You and he blocked you. African and he yeah. blocked you already. And, and you blocked me. You blocked me preemptively. I had never had an exchange with you. You blocked me preemptively. Because he's going to come to me on that bro-bro level. But what he don't understand is that we ADOS in this building. Okay. Shout out. Thank you so much for calling, caller. Look, Yvette, let me say this. ADOS has been transformative already, and we just getting started. We got the conference. The conference is October 4th and 5th. Shout out to Simmons HBCU, last HBCU possibly. Shout out to Kevin Cosby. Shout out to Sandy Darity. Dr. Sandy Darity's been taking hits, y'all. Give that man some support. He not no right winger. He's fought for black people for 30 years, doing real work, giving us data that we've never seen before. I can't believe that these people have been doing this. Y'all better come stronger. I'm just saying to y'all that at the end of the day, both me and Yvette want the best for black folks. Understand that both me and Yvette basically just take donations. The funding stores entirely has been donations, small donations like you see coming through Super Chat or or on PayPal or something like that. And then also Dr. Kevin Cosby uh, when we go and speak there. But there's been no right wing money, zero. Yep, and you too, you too. But that's it, zero. Yep. The the awfulness to actually say that in a Daily Cost article and have no proof because white people don't do this for free. White people don't do this much risk and work for free. They get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by their supporters because they have an agenda. I'm just telling y'all the truth. That's why it's unbelievable. That's why they consider us so dangerous look i just wanted to come to y'all today and just tell y'all i love y'all black folks ados folks even our allies love y'all too but we coming for a black agenda for reparations and we reforming this identity around the 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 reality that we built this country we gave everybody birthright citizenship check out that reconstruction documentary makes it real clear and as a result we're owed a great debt not only from america but from everybody Yvette, where can they find you? Mondays and Wednesdays, 9.30, 9.30 p.m. ish, Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's Breaking Brown Live on YouTube. Yeah, and you can find Tone Talks on tonetalks.org. You can subscribe and donate. I have my YouTube, Tone Talks. Please go and check out my interviews with Thomas Shapiro, Byron Allen, Sandy Darity. Go check these discussions out because they give a lot of framework to everything. Look. A lot of people been talking, everybody's wrong. I'm saying to y'all today that ADOS has changed the discussion. We flipped the table over. Now I need you guys to understand that you need reparations probably more than me and Yvette. We have no direct progeny. We don't have children. For y'all that are out there that have children, for your grandparents that got children and grandchildren, the fight is on for you to make sure that you have enough because you don't right now. I know the wealth data. Reparations is the answer. A black agenda focused on ADOS is the answer. Let's make them fulfill what we deserve.